Well, once again, uh, good afternoon from beautiful Kyoto to everyone that are here in person with us. We are indeed very lucky. And uh, certainly good afternoon, good morning, good, after, good evening to or, or all our colleagues who are joining us online. Uh, I think we have already a nice, uh, yes, a nice participation, diverse um, of the NRI colleagues uh, joining us. It's still quite early in um, many parts, well, the majority of the um, of the of, of our globe. Uh, so I think Europe and Africa, especially um, the uh, North and South America, it's still early there. But I really greatly appreciate our colleagues for joining us online. So just for the record, my name is Anya Gengo. I work at the IGF Secretariat, and uh, one of the one of my core responsibilities is to work together and support the network of uh, national, regional, sub-regional, and youth IGFs. When we um, started working together as a network, when the IGF Secretariat dedicated a focal point to DNRIs, we had, if I'm correct, around 50 or 60 NRIs. So that was the time when we were all enjoying uh, Brazil in 2015. Today we speak uh, about more than 160 officially recognized NRIs. Um, the network is not just re remarkably growing in um, quantity, it is growing in quality. If you look at the work that's been done at individual NRI levels, then you can see that there are strong efforts invested continuously into making the IGF processes at national or regional levels or specifically targeting youth engagement and youth empowerment to be as inclusive as that's possible. And uh, we have the NRIs, for example, that are strategically not hosting their meetings in the capitals, but they are touring the country. So because uh, colleagues from Brazil are on my left side, so they're one of the examples, Italian IGF, Polish IGF as well and so many others, and I think those are uh, excellent practices to mention at the beginning. This is a traditional NRI's coordination session we host at every annual IGF meeting, um, and it is a day where uh, we take the advantage of the fact that many of us are here present in person at the um, annual IGF meeting, and of course to connect with our colleagues online, to reflect on what has been done so far, where do we stand, what's the status quo, and uh, what needs to be done? Apologies, I have a instruction here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope our uh, colleagues uh, in Zoom can, can hear us well and see us well. So as I said, it is a uh, time for us to reflect um, and specifically to, um, to uh, try to compromise, brainstorm what needs to be done uh, for future for a strong NRI network. Uh, which means strong um, internet governance and internet governance forum uh, ecosystem. And I think the momentum, you would agree, is very important just because, um, politically speaking, uh, much is happening, also um, process-wise. Uh, you know that we are approaching the review of um, VISTAS, so VISTAS Plus 20 in 2025. That also means the review of the IGF's mandate in 2025. And um, the question today that we have for this session is, um, what is your view in terms of how to make um, the NRI's network stronger for a strong internet governance ecosystem? And specifically in the context of SS Plus 20 review, what could be the role of the NRI's? Of course, we will come also to other processes which are happening uh, in parallel to uh, everything that's been done so far. That is the Global Digital Compact. But also, we shouldn't forget about the Sustainable Development, development Goals, uh, on which already was reported that we are behind. And I know that through the NRIs, the concept of sustainable development is uh, very much addressed on, on several levels. Now, uh, I think we're very happy uh, that um, Part of the NRI's network um, is, um, on behalf of the Portugal IGF, is Ms. Uh, Anna Neves, who is also chairing the CSTD, the Commission for Science, Technology and Development, uh, with the United Nations. And because the CSTD issued a roadmap for Vistas Plus 20 review, before maybe we ask individually all NRI's to speak about, in general, what could we all do together collectively but also individually to make sure that we are a stronger network and what could be the role the NRIs could play in this plus 20 review. 
Maybe I could uh, ask Anna uh, to, as a chair, speak a little bit about the processes with the CSTD. How do you see the Vistas Plus 20 coming up? Uh, and specifically, what's the value of, um, of, a, of local inclusive processes with respect to internet governance? I think, Anna, you have the microphone next to you. Next to you. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I hope you, I can, hope you can hear it. OK, this is fine. Thank uh, you. Yes, uh, thank you, Anya, very much. So I'm uh, Anna Neves, I'm uh, from uh, Portugal, and I'm uh, uh, a member of the Bureau of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development of uh, UNCTAD, uh, which is the body uh, of United Nations uh, that has the responsibility to follow up on an annual basis uh, the, the WISIS process. And uh, uh, since the last uh, session of CSTD, last March, uh, it started the process for the, re the reviewing of the WISIS Plus 20. So I would like to share with you, because I was appointed the chair of the CSTD for one year until uh, next March, uh, it's um, a rotative uh, chairmanship of, of the Bureau. And, um, and so uh, now I would like to share with you, as I was uh, saying, uh, that for the review, the ECOSOC uh, adopted in June, so last June, um, a resolution requesting the CSTD to collect inputs from member states, uh, all facilitators and other stakeholders, and to organize during its 27th session in March 2024, uh, and in, uh, in the session in the following year in 2025, substantive discussions on the progress made in the implementation of the outcomes of the WISIS during the past 20 years, and to report thereon through the ECOSOC to the General Assembly. The CSTD members adopted uh, last March a roadmap um, at, uh, so uh, adopted the roadmap at its annual session in March 2023 uh, to guide the CSTD's work on WISIS Plus 20 review. What is this uh, roadmap about? So the roadmap includes open consultations at regional and global levels, by CSTD or in partnership with other UN agencies and UN regional commissions, a survey questionnaire to all stakeholders, governments, international organizations, private sector, civil society, technical communities, including academia, as well as written inputs from contributors to the regular UN Secretary General's uh, annual report on WISIS. It will prepare a synthesis report by the CSTD Secretariat based on these consultations and written inputs, which will be submitted uh, to the discussion at the annual session of the CSTD in 2024 and 2025. Uh, the third layer of this uh, roadmap is um, a report of the CSTD uh, of these discussions to be submitted through ECOSOC to the General Assembly uh, as inputs to the General Assembly's review in 2025. So the roadmap is very ambitious and uh, um, its full accomplishment depends, of course, on the availability of financial resources uh, for these purposes. But um, what I would like to, uh, to underline is that the first consultation will take place on the 10th of October, so next Tuesday, at um, 3.15 uh, in the main hall, I think. Uh, so it will be the first consultation, the first multi-stakeholder consultation. One thing that I would like to underline is that, as Anya said, we have over 160 national and regional uh, uh, initiatives of the IGF. It that is so powerful, but the problem is whether one, now, over 160 governments 
they are all aware of these national and regional initiatives of the IGF. So there is a lot of work to do among all these uh, stakeholders. And uh, another thing that we have to underline all the time is, not, is that it's not only about public and private sectors plus civil society. It's public sector, private sector, technical community, academia, civil society, international organizations. So there are several stakeholders. There are not only three. At the same time, we are having the discussion of the digital compact. Um, everybody says it's a parallel uh, process. It, will, it should end by uh, the summit uh, of the future uh, by September 2024. So it's the same community that is going to discuss it, but it will, be, it will include governments. So it's up to this 160 national and regional initiatives to inform your governments on the status quo, on the importance of this, of these NRIs, um, because this made a huge difference. See where we were in 23-25 and where we are now in 2023. Thank you, Anya. Thank you very much, Anna. And I think you gave us, uh, yeah, indeed. Really deserves deserves an applause, and I I have to say that um, um, it's very good that uh, you are in the role of the chair with such strong um, direct experience as a founder of one of probably the youngest national IGFs and now one of the most exotic IGFs I would say the Lusophone IGF, uh, which is um, such a good practice in the NRI's network, and I hope it will be followed by other language-centered uh, communities. The, the floor is now open for you. So there are a couple of microphones at the beginning, so you don't have to queue, but I'll just ask for cooperation from the colleagues in the first rows to pass on the microphone if we have uh, interventions from the back. And I already see Ananda signing up to speak. Um, so the question is, uh, what do we do to ensure that the NRI's network is uh, better interconnected, first of all, that it's sustainable, that we're not leaving anyone behind, and then what Anna said very importantly, that we are on the radar of those who are making decisions and to make sure that we have a channel that um, those decisions are impacted by um, information coming from a multi-stakeholder nexus. Maybe you can start from uh, the experience of your national and regional IGFs. What is it that you're missing in your communities and where we could maybe support better each other? Um, um, maybe I'll ask uh, for Ananda just to take a microphone from the first row, but I'll share my experience while Ananda is getting ready from this year. So this year I um, uh, was very privileged to participate in person in a few uh, regional IGS primarily, uh, and of course online in um, a number of uh, national, re sub-regional, regional and youth IGFs. And uh, I've seen a difference, for example, with the Asia-Pacific Regional IGF. Uh, I see Jennifer is here. I've seen a strong um, concentration of uh, government entities coming from Australia as your host country, but also uh, other countries in the region. And that's something that probably changed statistically, uh, Jennifer will tell us. Eurodig as well, I mean, strong support from intergovernmental sector in Europe, uh, different governments, uh, of course, uh, other regional IGFs as well. Uh, but um, I wonder who is missing in our dialogues and how do we engage them better? So that's the question. Ananda, please, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ananda for the record. I uh, represent Youth IGF Nepal, one of the youth initiatives in APEC. So uh, my question and like sharing the experience, uh, how do we engage in is like when we start doing things, people start to recognize and like st stakeholders actually accept, like uh, if uh, we have done two national youth IGFs, and uh, while we do our first, it was like, what is a youth IGF? What does it do? And on the second uh, year, a lot of stakeholders were really engaged, and like they were happy to be there and like uh, learn more about it. Uh, what we focus is we um, focus on capacity building of youth so that they know about the 
IGF ecosystem and other stakeholders also understand the gravity of the issues that are happening around the digital landscape. That's what we are doing. And what I see missing is like uh, the real sustainability model. I'm also part of APR IGF and like uh, how do we actually get the host for the next year is really a pain, you know, like who will host the event? Like for the next year, Taiwan has uh, TWNIC has um, proposed, but after that, another host has to come up. And uh, that is not that easy, you know, like um, making a regional IGFs a success is really, uh, many people have to engage in that and the sustainable model is not at fixed. For Eurodig, I think it's more clear. You, there's EU that supports uh, more in the engagement and organizing. Uh, I think uh, the government part and may, maybe other regional in this, uh, multilateral organizations should chip in into that so that uh, these uh, kind of uh, initiatives are uh, sustainable and can go. And another thing is like interconnection between these IGFs. Like um, there are 160 IGF already. How do national and uh, youth initiatives from APEC really connect to the Asia Pacific regional IGF? We do not have any mechanism right now. And how do all the regional IGF connect with each other? There is no actual uh, mechanism for that as well. There is a youth Asia Pacific IGF. Uh, that is not connected to youth IGF in the region. Like there is a body, but like how do we connect? There is same in like uh, youth uh, youth dig and like all of the regional youth IGF that are. So we need to have a specific mechanism that is interconnected with uh, from the youth initiative to the national initiative to the regional initiative. And I think there are more sub-regional IGF as well. So there need to be a concrete model where all can communicate and maybe collaborate. So that is it. Thank you so much for the mic. Thank you very much, Ananda. Okay, so we have a couple of hands here. Uh, can I, okay, can I ask Poncelet, because I've seen Jennifer firstly raising her hand, just, or Emmanuel, just to help with the microphone to get to Jennifer. Or maybe I can come actually down and help with that as well. And then we'll come back to this room, then we'll go there. Okay, I'll, I'll keep on standing over here so I'm not like looking at everyone. Um, hi colleagues, hi everyone. My name is Jennifer Chung. I'm part of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF Secretariat. Um, just reflecting quickly on what Anya has posed in the beginning and then I'll kind of reflect a little bit more on what Ananda shared. So the question really is, you know, what is missing? What is the, the part where the NRI networks can uh, be able to fulfill its its strengths. We are 160 plus strong. How can we leverage our um, our network, what we do best, into the upcoming processes such as with the Plus 20, whatever is going to happen with the GDC? So reflecting back to is the two things that I'm thinking of. Really being able to open the channels to the decision making people for them to be able to hear what we have to say, the kind of uh, best practices the issues that we face in our regions, in our sub-regions, in our national uh, jurisdictions and all of that. And the second part is having those decision makers come to our meetings to be able to see what we talk about, to be able to feel exactly how internet governance is being discussed in each and every single one of our forums and meetings. And so um, what Anya has mentioned earlier is actually really important. Asia Pacific Regional IGF, we have had a stakeholder engagement committee that has been looking at and analyzing the participation data across the years and identifying the sub-regions and also the stakeholders that we are missing that we, we need to bring to the table. This year, we're really uh, happy that the Australian government has really uh, uh, stepped up and been able to bring in more government folk that we are missing from Australia and also around the region. The second thing that we think has been really good for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, and I think I reflected this in last year's coordination session is for us, having co-located events actually increases the exposure of local 
uh, the local people, so in this case, the Pacific community and the community within Australia itself. This year we had NetThing, which is the Australian um, NRI. We also had Pacific IGF, which is of course a sub-regional IGF in the region, and also um, the Asia Pacific Youth IGF. So we actually had four co-located events. Having that there actually uh, increases a lot of um, cross-pollination of issues bringing other people to be able to understand a lot more issues. I think that is something perhaps a sub-regional or a regional IGF can consider in terms of sustainability. And the second thing uh, that I wanted to point out is because we had the parliamentary track at ABIGF this year, I think this is also something that we also need to think about a little more. They are also decision makers in the various jurisdictions, and they're the ones who are going to be making the regulations, the laws, the bills, and they need to understand what is being discussed in the community about all of these emerging issues, uh, AI being one of them, internet governance, of course. And then finally, I wanted to echo what Ananda just said. It is really important to be able to facilitate multi-way dialogue. It's not just one way, not just two way, especially when we're talking about our network being so big now. It needs to be kind of a learning uh, um, symbiotic relationship. And I think the Asia Pacific Youth IGF this year tried for the second year to hold kind of an Asia, an APAC youth leaders dialogue, I think hopefully they can evolve that and grow that as well. And perhaps that's another way for the NRI network to think about, um, you know, being able to leverage other events that are going to be talking about similar activities and including those people who are at these events already, who may not already come to, to your meeting. I think that is really important. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, I saw a couple of hands around you. Also, I see Carlos is the closest to you, then Vakas, then we'll go back to where Emmanuel Poncelet and um, Nazar are. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Anne, also. Uh, hello, everybody. Well, um, I think we got a, a lot of improvements from the very beginning when we start this kind of process, multi stakeholder process. And uh, this is mainly because the United Nations give us a lot of support with people like you, for example, that works uh, very hard for uh, this kind of process. The, 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 the most challenging is how the governments of our countries can collaborate more. And I guess uh, we can make uh, this better if we are able to uh, have some more help from the United Nations to work with our governments. So uh, maybe also if we can have, uh, only big countries can host these big uh, events, uh, like uh, the, uh, Japan or Brazil in Latin America or Mexico, but the small countries are not able to host this kind of uh, big events. So it's not so easy for the government to understand what's going on in the world about this. So. If you are looking for some way to make this sustainable, let's get more involved with the government. I think this is a very, very good uh, issue. Thank you very much for all your work, and thank you, Anne, Anne and guys, for the support also. Thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, Carlos is from the Ecuador IGF, just if uh, I'm sure there are colleagues who are not uh, maybe familiar with all of us. We know each other well. We spend considerable amount of time every month together. Vakas, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Vakas Hassan. I work for the telecom regulator in Pakistan, but I also volunteer for, uh, for regional and uh, other initiatives, national initiatives on IG. I have two comments, being wearing two hats. I think um, I'm in a position to make two comments, one from the government side and one from the other side. If you look at government participation in the regional and national initiatives and also at the global IGF, it is increasing because I believe that the discussion has become more respectable and more cordial between all the stakeholders. When this process started, there were, of course, there, there, are, there are points that you have to be strong about. When you're, your voice has to be strong, you have to make your point. But I think the governments have now realized that this discussion on internet governance, uh, it is, it is not a one-handed decision. It has to be a multi-stakeholder decision. And now they're becoming more active in these kind of forums because uh, these discussions are more progressive in nature now. Uh, that being said, 
being associated with APR IGF as well and all, I think there is still a lot of room for improvement. I think the government participation in these forums uh, is increasing, but it is not, I don't think that is at that level where we can say that there is an equal participation among all stakeholders, including the government. There will always be a disbalance, but there has to be a certain threshold that has to be maintained. If you look at the trend at APR IGF at least, we have seen it grown growing over the years, and I think this, believe this year it was around 25-30% maybe where government stakeholders were there. Now for the other thing where, when you're talking about strengthening the NRI's network, there is a natural progression that we see. For example, uh, a jo your journey might, so for example, my journey started with the school on internet governance that we have in Pakistan. I attended the school on internet governance, and then there is a uh, um, Asian I IGF, APR IGF, and then to global IGF. I think how we can collaborate is to identify people or the next generation of internet leaders that we see on a national level and then maybe at a regional level and then maybe share this with between us, introduce them to people um, who are at the global level or regional level so that the right kind of people are being selected for forums like APR, IGF and IGF who then you know, progress to become the next generation of internet leaders in our, from our country or from our region. So one of the things that we can probably strengthen a bit more within the 160 plus network that we have is information sharing about personnel that are actually being, being invited and being selected as fellows or as participants at these events. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vakas. Uh, let's go to, okay, you have already the microphone, so maybe can you go, sorry, <laughs> to the third row, then we'll come back to the middle one. Um. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andres Bass. I'm from New York. And I want to know why IGF do not have a lot of representatives from the United States. And by the time when I go to the UN with a lot of youth, and when I'm talking about the IGF, they don't have no knowledge about what IGF and And this is my sixth one. I'm coming. And each time, I make sure I bring uh, with me students from different parts that can see how wonderful that program is. And I think, uh, yeah, I need to do a better communication with the regional. That's the way they can have a platform when we send people. It's not a one-time deal. I feel like IGF is one-time deal. Anytime they have a session, that's why you know about it. After that, it's like a dead end. And they don't have somebody who know exactly how it is. And it is... Uh, sad because it's a program under the UN and each time I went to those uh, youth meeting and I tell them based on the competency and what they're talking about the internet, how they voted they have for policy change and structure and uh, internet governance and they don't even have, know about IGF and I want to uh, make sure uh, that idea of IGF is not a one time thing when the session is coming but people can know more about it, especially if you're in the UN, advertise it. Because the global communication, I think, I'm the one who sent them the link. They didn't have the link uh, about the IGF now. I think that's uh, supposed to have a better understanding on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, your comment and suggestions. Uh, I think, uh, is it Poncelet or, yes, Poncelet, maybe we can give the floor now to you. Yes, thank you um, very much, Ponsla speaking for the records. Um, I will say um, in terms of, um, I would like to make my comments in terms of improving um, based on what we have in, in Africa, and I'll use the Gambia as an example in which you have to have um, overall buy-in from your government, and um, your minister is involved, your parliament is involved, and then even the local UNDP office is involved. So, um, in a sustainable way, the government has a budget for it. The UNDP supports it through their governance program. And I think generally when we, if, um, if other countries apply, I'm um, looking at what um, Anna, Anna said earlier on with the CSTD, um, they can come on the top on during our regional IGFs 
to support and, and speak, but it also makes sure that like the African Regional IGF, we should have it harmonized that all countries do theirs on time before it happens, because we still have a situation whereby um, there's no harmonized calendars. And I think that, shows, that applies to all regions. We should have a harmonized calendar that you have your um, nationals in the first two quarters of the year, and then the third quarter of the year, you have your regional before we come into the global. You know, so that is something uh, I would like to see happen, and we should try to engage our various UNDP regional bureaus, whether it's in Asia, whether it's in um, Africa, you know, or Europe, and to um, make sure they are involved in the process at the regional to amplify the voices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ponsalat. Uh, any other comments? I yes, yeah. Anup. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, thank you very much, Anya. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, the Secretariat for the work that uh, you put in uh, in organizing us. It's not uh, a, a small job; it's um, huge. But uh, I think you, your your team does a very good job of uh, uh, putting everything together. That is number one. Number two. Uh, I would like to give an example of uh, what we have started doing in, in Tanzania. Um, you know, the IGF uh, previously in Tanzania was known for having an, an event in a year and you wait for another year uh, when you have uh, the next IGF. So what we, ha we are trying to do now, however, um, shoestring budget based, is to have issue-based uh, capacity building uh, workshops where we invite all the stakeholders to be able to, um, uh, to engage with us. For example, we had the issues of digital taxation and we involved all the, all the stakeholders including the, the taxman and the ministry and now uh, our IGF has been known for for all these, uh, you know, activities that we organize as interstitial activities, you know, um, towards uh, the end, uh, towards the calendar of our, of our national IGF. So what I would recommend for us to be stronger and to continue to be, we are relevant, to continue to be more relevant, is that uh, we, we, we become issue-based, you know, uh, oriented outfit where as we engage our, 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 our multi-stakeholder on the ground, we also take issues that are on the ground and turn them into, into uh, international inter intersectional activities. For example, in Tanzania, um, we were very instrumental in terms of uh, the uh, personal data protection uh, act that came into force uh, last year. And also, we, we are now very instrumental um, uh, in the digital strategy that the Ministry of, um, of ICT is actually um, um, uh, rolling out uh, for input. So I think uh, if we were to, to, uh, to, to take all these intersectional capacity building activities and invite all the stakeholders, we will make some inroads in terms of uh, making sure that we become more relevant on the ground. And in the process, uh, we'll be known uh, at the ground level as actually people who are not just uh, uh, doing the meetings, they are actually uh, there to, to make sure that the issues that are on the ground are being discussed on and, and, and being acted upon. Last is about uh, the issues of uh, connecti connectivity, for example. Our national IGF also uh, undertook a project on connectivity. And uh, we began a project known as uh, Tanzania Digital Inclusion Project, where we train women and young people on digital literacy. Uh, and also, we have created uh, an example, an exemplary uh, uh, di community digital innovation hub, where you know people from the community can come and access internet, 
and also, you know, uh, you know, uh, learn about how to use the internet and so on and so forth. So if we have some tangible projects that we're actually doing on the ground, people will see us uh, not only as discussing the issues of internet governance and internet development, development but actually creating solutions. So I think uh, we also ha have to take this route where we do some concrete, uh, even very shoestring budget-oriented uh, little project in our communities that you know, people can also emulate. So I think uh, that can also be very helpful in terms of uh, making ourselves you know, strong and uh, continue to, because you know, it's like if there was no IGF, for example, if you were, let's say, in the worst case scenario, you say today, no IGF. IGF has become one of the uh, grassroots movements where you can actually implement a lot of stuff through the multi-stakeholder uh, outfit that is on the ground. So I think, um, let me say that will be my uh, 50 cent contribution. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Nazar. Anu, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Anya. Um, this is Mohammed Abdullah Onu from Bangladesh. Uh, we are creating so many community, IGF community in Bangladesh, Kids IGF, Youth IGF, Omen IGF, member of the Parliament IGF, and also Bangladesh School of Internet Governance. Now we are hearing 18 IGF. 18 IGF, IGF process is now is adult now, right now. Now we are searching how IGF process is sustainable. So my observation is, why not uh, we are creating one research cell in IGF, in, under the United Nations IGF process. Be, uh, this research cell working with university, academia involved, they are find out what is the sustainable model is the IGF process. This is our observation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anu. Can I, Anu, ask you just to pass on the microphone behind you to Satish, and then, and then we'll go back to Anu. Yes. Thanks, Anyan. I'm Satish Babu from India. Uh, we have had a very interesting uh, few years uh, uh, about the internet uh, governance itself. Our, IGF, uh, our school on internet governance was started eight years back. A couple of weeks back, we celebrated the eighth uh, edition of the school on internet governance. The school itself was very uh, instrumental in pushing for an IGF, which we didn't have for the longest time. So three years back, we, the school itself took the lead and pushed with the government. And finally, for the last two years, we have had the IGF. Second point is that the IGF has brought together the high-level ministers to the gra grassroots level workers together in one platform. That, I think for India's size, that's a very important development. The third point is that not all regions or countries have multi-stakeholder structures to kind of drive this. In our case, what's, become, what's happened is that this, this IGF itself, India IGF itself has become a multi-stakeholder body. That is not into pushing for decisions at this point, but that is discussions are happening in the multi-stakeholder model. I think it's a very important development because IGFs are there in many countries. But very few countries have proper multi-stakeholder structures like Brazil has or like European Union has. So this IGF can become, for the future, the multi-stakeholder level uh, model that can be then strengthened to take decisions also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Satish. Emmanuel, please. Okay. Thank you very much, Anya. So at the Togo IGF, so my name is Emmanuel from the Togo IGF. So at the Togo IGF, we have recognized that organizing a forum a day or two um, where the recommendations are not being implemented is not really sufficient because we have tried last year to track for the last uh, nine years what kind of recommendation we put out there and what has been the implementation so far. So we've noticed that uh, in Togo, for example, the regulator do participate in the name of the government, but the ministry usually, they don't usually come as actors, 
they come as participants. So it's quite difficult uh, to track the implementation with them because they are not actors in putting uh, those recommendations together. So what we try to do this year is do a stakeholder engagement with those stakeholders, the MPs, the government, and the regulator. Because this is a problem in most Francophone African countries where government don't usually feel discussing on equal footing with civil society and um, uh, other stakeholder group like the business. So this is uh, a strategy we are putting in place. Together with Dr. Shango, we develop a training material. So this coming November, trying to organize a workshop for those stakeholders alone to explain what the internal governance means, the processes to them, because I think there is a lot of ignorance. So usually when you send them a letter, they can designate anybody from the ministry to participate, but they are not really actors and also implementing those uh, how the recommendations. So we hope that by engaging them uh, alone, they can actually join the conversation you know, where we organize our next um, IGF. And the other point also is when we organize the schools, those government officials don't usually apply to join the school. So it's also a very uh, big problem. So we think that the workshop can try to solve that uh, gap. And uh, from the regional level as well, because I'm fortunate to coordinate the West African School of Internet Governance, at the regional level, the problem we have is that we don't have funding for the school. But those schools are usually expensive than the forum. And the school represents um, a kind of um, uh, ground where we train the future leaders for those conversations because today um, it has been a while. I don't classify myself among the youth anymore because I'm on the adult table and I'm on the youth table for years. And this is the uh, same example in most African countries or West African countries where the same youth are the actors in the NRIs. So, the hope is that we should be able to train as much as possible young people to take lead in the, how do you call it, the youth conversation while we actually grow, you know, uh, in the NRI level. So that is something. So we should find a mechanism to fund the schools, especially the regional schools, because uh, they are very important to, to train those coming leaders. And uh, if we don't have fund for it, it will be quite difficult for the sustainability of the processes at the regional level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manuel. Julian, please. Thank you, Anja. Uh, my name is uh, Julian Casabuenas. I'm uh, talking on behalf of the Colombian IGF, uh, where we, um, this year, will be um, uh, uh, implementing or uh, doing and uh, so, uh, one of the reflections uh, came out after um, the um, participation of uh, all these uh, spaces, and we believe that uh, we should continue uh, supporting these local initiatives to uh, strengthen the multi-stakeholder uh, model and also to identify those uh, sectors that are underrepresented and find, find to get them involved in the process of the uh, internet governance. Um, uh, but uh, very much focus also in encouraging young people to get uh, involved. And um, uh, we believe that we uh, have to work in creating mechanisms that uh, we can share the results of these local uh, discussions to be systematized to produce these multi-stakeholder messages. Uh, for the development and the uh, strengthening of, of the internet, as uh, uh, it has been uh, done in the last uh, uh, IGFs and uh, other experiences uh, with NRIs. And um, uh, also bringing uh, internet governance discussion to new actors. Uh, we believe that the exercise with the Global Digital Compact in, uh, in the Colombian IGF What's very interesting uh, in involving about 25 organizations in the discussions from different uh, stakeholders and bringing together uh, with these uh, inputs uh, uh, that was required, uh, requested from the Global Digital Compact. 
And also uh, uh, from that uh, experience, uh, we believe that uh, this multi-stakeholder model should be recognized, protected, promoted, and supported an essential element for internet governance. And this uh, collaboration among all sectors, besides being fundamental, is the uh, mo uh, most strategic and appropriate way to move forward uh, the global digital development. Um, also, we believe that the Global Digital Compact should, uh, should build on what has been built uh, around internet governance uh, at local and global, regional, national levels, and other uh, spaces and other initiatives that uh, we have been uh, participating in in, uh, in the past, and um, have discussed the future of the internet, uh, for example, as uh, NetMoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julian. Ah, our special um, friend, I have to say, uh, some of you will remember the bright days of Sri Lanka National IGF. Then we had a gap due to a very unfortunate situation in the country with the community. Mahishwara is back with us. The National IGF is uh, getting refreshed and getting back. And we're very happy to have you here, Mahishwara. Thank you very much, Anja. Uh, allowing me to come back uh, to the IGF. Uh, and, uh, Actually, uh, 2016 and 2017 was the brightest uh, IGF sessions that we had. But uh, after 2019, uh, the, with the Easter attack onwards, we had c c many po problematic issues. Uh, you know, the, now we are facing the financial crisis as a country. So uh, even now, we are facing internet governance issues at the moment. Within those period, even though the forum is not conducted, there were many activities we did regarding the policies, regarding the acts, regarding these things. Because Internet Governance Forum is just not a forum where it stands in an annual basis. There are actions in between. So most of the things that happen in the Cybersecurity Act in Sri Lanka, they have tried to produce it in uh, un-multi-stakeholder, undemocratic way. Where that we have uh, gathered, we have done few forums, not internet governance forums actually, uh, with the multi-stakeholders, we present our opinions and views. Where the government had took uh, their step back in uh, 2019. Then after, or not, now we are facing the same issue regarding the Safe Internet Act, where that it uh, may have issues uh, to be fragmented the internet. So we are that we are collecting here, connecting here, we are gathering here to keep one internet. Uh, so uh, as a suggestion, uh, we as an NRI network, we can do something. We had only 14 days to analyze this whole policy that they have prepared. So what we can do, we can gather together as NRIs and work, and we can share your opinions, and we can build upon our views on that event. This not should be uh, Sri Lankan policy. It should be done by Sri Lankans. So what we can do it shared in the whole NRI network. So likewise, I propose that thing. And uh, still, uh, we are planning our 2023 IGF version, a smaller version one. Uh, hopeful, your support will be there again with us. Thank you very much. You, you really deserve this applause. Thank you very much, Mahishwara, and also for, for being here, all the efforts in uh, um, reinitiating the national IGF. I know it's um, far from being easy. Thank you very much. Uh, any other comments? Ah, yes, we have here a comment. Hello everyone, thank you Anya for giving me the floor. I will make a brief intervention trying to, trying to respond to your main question. My name is Tanara Lauschner. I coordinate the work group of Brazilian IGF Initiative uh, organized by Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. And from our perspective, the issue of how to convey the, the messages to, to decisions makers is key for this decision. 
for this discussion, sorry. In Brazilian IGF, we have been able to gradually increase the participation of decision makers throughout the years, either by making adjustments in the format of the event to guarantee real multi-stakeholder discussions with meaningful participation of all sectors, or even by leveraging the opportunities of our annual events to foster national-wide debates. The Brazilian IGF was a key resource in the past when it discussed the main Brazilian internet law. And the same has been happening recently with new trends such as the platform regulation debates. I believe in our eyes should find ways to adapt their networks to be more and more connected with local, regional, and global debates so that they can be seen as a valuable resource by decision makers. Other than that, I believe we must find ways to strengthen our bonds and cooperation between the NRIs, be it to simply exchange experience, be it to build a whole new partnerships for consolidating useful models of discussing, participating, and impacting local, regional, and global debates about the internet, ICTs, and the digital ecosystem as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tanara. Ah, if you have uh, new comments, um, maybe I'll just go, uh, since I think it was uh, at the same time, raise hand. So I'll go to Roberto from Bolivia, then we'll go to Gunala. Thank you, Anja. Um, hello, everyone. It's great to be here again in this, uh, as you said, uh, traditional coordination session, Anja. And I think um, I would like to share only a couple of examples, as you mentioned before, that I think are important for us to learn between each other. And uh, maybe, as one of the colleagues said before, there is not necessarily a particular uh, prescription or a particular mechanism that we can actually apply in the different regions or different countries. Um, one of the examples I would like to mention is how we managed to organize between the uh, different IGFs in LAC region in order to um, arrange, I will say, a very interesting session that we have last year, 2022. Um, in which we actually achieved what we always wanted, and that is, that is to try to coordinate between all our regional IGFs in order to try to identify priority sized uh, items, prior, pri priorities in the region, or important common themes that uh, also could be very, very relevant in order to take them to higher levels, meaning, of course, the global IGF. And as you said before, now in this uh, and for the next year, it will be very important, more maybe than ever, to come up with this kind of concrete coordination and identification of the themes that we really like to push to have as part of the discussion in the agenda of the Summit of the Future and, of course, including in the, in the GDC. Um, so I think it's, it's very feasible. I want to take the opportunity to congratulate uh, Julian, which under his leadership, you know, Colnodo is going to take care about the secretariat of the local, the, the regional, our regional in LAC IGF. So I think it will continue consolidating this kind of coordination in the, in the future. And um, the other thing that I wanted to mention because Again, it's something that uh, we are always concerned about is the participation of the governments. It's true that uh, among all the stakeholders, it's really difficult in some cases to actually take them to, or to the table, to the dialogue table in, in different countries. Some, some countries succeed on that, but some other don't. In our case, we had, I will say, uh, we, we succeeded with them in our case in Bolivia and IGF, we succeeded having them in, in the dialogue table and we even got very important results, I'm talking about from 2017 until 2020 when we have very uh, interesting outcomes in terms of adjusting public policy in terms that were very important for, for Bolivians. 
So I think it, it, the, the presence of, of them in these dialogues in our NRIs is, is really important. And now it comes a suggestion, um, Anja. Uh, we, we know that we always count on you, on, on the Secretariat. You are always open to be part of our dialogues, and we thank for that a lot. Even the MAC chairs uh, usually attend to this kind of event one when we, we actually invite you, because I think it's very important for us in our local dialogues to count with your participation, because this gives even more formality to, the, to our events. Um, what happens in 2021, in our case, what we couldn't manage to get the government, because many of the people that we, to, to, we which, uh, or to whom we were discussing before, were out of the offices, so they changed the, the different authorities. Uh, so in this kind of opportunities, I think a good uh, way to even get them again to, to our dialogue table will be to receive some sort of support from the Secretariat, meaning that maybe, uh, I don't know if an invitation or a letter or something like that from the Secretariat that goes to the government uh, officials could help us a lot in order to positively persuade them uh, to, to participate in these kind of dialogues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. And um, I certainly take that um, question and proposal to the Secretariat's management and, and up to discuss. Uh, and I do agree with you, probably um, it will be helpful. And I, I also recall these uh, types of suggestions from 2016 and 17, and maybe it's time to act upon those. Um, thank you very much. I think, Gunela, you had your hand raised. So you have the floor. Yes, then we'll go to, uh, to further to Lillian. Thank and you. I think I saw a couple of hands there. Hello, Gunela Asprink, uh, uh, chairing the Internet Society Accessibility Standing Group. And uh, we've, we've talked a lot about um, underrepresentation of particular groups uh, from the community in the um, internet governance debate. And uh, one particular group, of course, is uh, persons with disability. And uh, according to the World Health Organization, at least 15% of any population has a disability. And uh, so we're talking about 1.3 and a billion people across the world. And if we're looking here at the IGF, it would be well, well under 1% of, of, um, of attendees, um, both online and on site, who have a disability. So we really do need to increase that so that we have that disability voice uh, speaking from a lived experience. And um, from the Asia Pacific region, um, the standing group has um, developed a, a very good relationship with the Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance to help um, train young people uh, with disability and disability advocates to, uh, to build that understanding, to build a new voice. But in order to do that, um, people need to have support to be able to participate um, in NRIs uh, nationally, globally, and uh, and it's it's quite it it, it needs more support. Um, we had an issue with APRIGF and and um, needing more sponsorship for that support, and certainly with the IGF uh, support for persons with disability coming, um, that could be in increased, and certainly some persons with disability need um, travel assistance and, and assistance to be around the venue in all sorts of practical ways. And there needs to be probably more understanding of that. So we can have people here. And uh, fortunately, the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability have had some support um, through Vinsurf Google to bring people here but we need a lot more. We need a lot more from various sectors. And so that's what I'm asking the IGF to provide more of that support so we can have the disability movement's motto, nothing about us without us, here at the IGF. Thank you. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Gunella. Uh, let's hear from, 
I think Lillian was first, then then we'll then we'll go to Mary, then we go to Rui, and then I don't know who else was up, but you can prepare. Yes, please. Can I can I use this? Is it on? I can hear you well, yes. <laughs> thank you, Anya, and uh, thank you for organizing this session. Um, I wanted to share some experience from, um, from Uganda and uh, East Africa. Uh, my name is Lilian Naroga. I coordinate the Uganda Internet Governance Forum and the East Africa Internet Governance Forum. I think I've heard uh, from um, a number of colleagues here, you know, talking about involving other actors like government, private sector, and the youth. And I think this is good. Um, from the Uganda perspective, we always had a challenge of uh, bringing in the private sector into you know, these conversations because I think just around the whole word, wording around internet governance, you know, and most cases, these conversations around you know, policies because um, in my country and maybe in Africa, we talk about so much regulation than you know, um, being practical about some of the things that come out of these conversations. So what we have seen right now is the private sector is reaching out to us to be more involved in these conversations. And um, just about last week, we received an email from, the, from MTN Group, MTN Uganda, which is one of the leading uh, telecom companies um, in Africa and in Uganda, you know, to just have conversations around uh, digital human rights and uh, they were more focused into digital skilling, for young people and uh, you know for women, so for us this is what this is a plus because in the past the platform has been used for you know bringing together people, seeing how can we collaborate. Um, at the regional level, um, at the East African level, we had a forum last year, and some of the recommendations um, were to how do we involve more government people, you know, government entities uh, into these conversations. And um, one of the key issues we were looking at at the regional block was uh, cyber security. And this is where the pain is. So we are trying to see how can we translate our conversations into actionable items that can involve these, these key stakeholders that we are targeting. So um, this year around, when we organized the East Africa School on Internet Governance, we identified regional entities within the East African community and uh, working with uh, the Secretariat of the East Africa community, we were able to identify about seven institutions and we targeted you know, to give them you know, an introduction to internet governance, but also targeting cybersecurity as one of the key areas that we wanted them to strengthen in terms of harmonizing regional you know, policies and that kind of thing. So the key takeaway here for us is away from you know, convening and talking, how can we actionalize the items, you know, the recommendations we get from the community and, the st and stakeholders. And we are seeing this beginning to happen, stakeholders reaching out to us and the like. So for purposes of uh, strengthening the, the you know, uh, talking about the continuity of the IGF, the WCS, you know, plus 10 and all that, I think we can use our initiatives as platforms of engagement because we're already doing that, but then we need to be able to target and identify areas of interest to particular stakeholders, because if we come with this, you know, bigger, you know, conversations and all that, we tend to, people stay, tend to shy away from these conversations. So the targeted conversations, the, the actionable items that we want to identify, I think that is the key takeaway we can, you know, utilize um, from my perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe Rui. Hello, uh, this is Rui Zhong from the China IGF. Uh, in, I would like to share a quick point. Uh, in China, we will follow the uh, internet governance uh, event or issue, both happening in China or in global uh, community. So we will organize the uh, salon or workshop uh, to discuss some um, the uh, the hot topic. For example, the universal acceptance, uh, data governance, uh, information accessibility, such like that. 
And that we will bring this uh, information to the global IGF. And so we, we would like to uh, communicate, uh, uh, enhance the interaction with uh, all of the uh, regional or sub-regional IGF. So um, uh, maybe I will I have received many uh, mailing lists that event. Uh, well, I can learn many things from the uh, other countries I have. So uh, I, I'm wondering, uh, and any, any other more way or motivation uh, mechanism to promote uh, interaction between different the uh, regional IGF or country IGF? For example, if I have. A, a uh, special uh, topic we'd like to discuss or would like to share with the others, uh, maybe we can uh, generate uh, a Zoom link or a Zoom meeting, or we can discuss together something like that. Uh, that's my uh, quick point. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, one more uh, advertisement. Uh, China IGF will host a, a social event night on this Tuesday evening, and welcome all of you to come here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rui. And uh, I think you've all received the invitation to a social event hosted by our colleagues at the China National IGF. So I hope we can also continue this uh, excellent dialogue there. But let's please now give the floor to Mary. Thank you, uh, Anya, for giving me the floor. And uh, I, I think it should be evening, colleagues. Um, I just want to share, I, I just want to continue from where Ponslet stopped. I want to ask whether there's anything that the, the uh, UNDESA at its own level will do to connect other UN agencies in our countries to um, show interest in IGF processes in our, in our countries, in our nations, in our region, in our sub-regional level. So um, I'm throwing back to to uh, Ondesa and Anya if there's something that could be done at that level. Now I share what has happened in my own country. We decided that I started as the convener of the Nigeria Internet Governance Forum, but um, we came to a point to say, look, um, not one person will continue to coordinate. So we decided to, 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 to move and find other stakeholders uh, instead of uh, the non-state state actors. So when we move it to um, a government uh, agency, that agency would uh, take it up as uh, a project or a program for the year and then fund most of the activities so it's sustained. So just to share as an example, and uh, the Africa IGF we, we hosted, Nigeria hosted this year, it was government in particular that spent the whole money to host that Africa IGF. And it, it turned out to be very good. They, it, when, when, when Nigeria decided to, to bid, it was government agency that bidded, and they put it in their budget, and so funding was not a problem. I know sometimes it's always, it's always difficult to get funding for our uh, initiative and our processes and our conversation and our discussions. Then at the sub-regional level, we involved the ECOWAS. ECOWAS is uh, the sub-regional um, economic community of uh, West Africa. And uh, that's where our secretariat is. And um, it's part of the activity their yearly activity. And when we want to draw up our focus for the year, we look at what, uh, what um, conversations um, um, the, the member states would uh, want us to discuss and uh, come up with recommendations. And when these recommendations are made, um, is sent to the, the ECOWAS will now uh, present it at the, either the, the uh, ministers level, convers I mean, meeting at the ECOWAS level or the heads of state. So it doesn't, it doesn't arrest or it doesn't stop from a uh, mere conversation. The communique is always carried forward. And again, at Africa level, now that 
I am so excited. The number of African uh, parliamentarians that are attending the African track now is beginning to make sense because those ones are either chairpersons of uh, the uh, ICT committee at the, parliament, at the, at the parliament, parliament or they are the uh, cybersecurity chairpersons at the parliament. So when the executive will bring issues that are coming out from the conversation and recommendations and messages from the executive to National Assembly to look for funding and uh, processes like that or, or, or look for support, I mean the parliamentarians would support and also policies that they would support will be the one that would uh, better the conversations we have in uh, internet governance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mary, for bringing those good practices from the African IGF. Um, I don't know if we have uh, any more hands in the room, but I would, uh, if you agree, uh, would like to prioritize our online participants. Uh, we have a few NRI coordinators that would like to take the floor, and uh, it's very, very early for them. So um, that's much appreciated, your commitment. Yao, you have the floor, then Umut, then Abraham. I'm going to ask the technicians to unmute uh, Yao Amevi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anya. Can you hear me, everybody? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. And before, uh, I am Yao Amevi from uh, Youth IGF Benin. I'm representing Youth IGF Benin this talk. And I'm also uh, member of uh, Dynamic Coalition uh, on data-driven and health technology. So before I start, I would like to thank you, Anya, for uh, participating virtually to the first Youth IGF event in Benin. That was very awesome. And the support that was really relevant and got uh, very great feedback from your participation to this event. Uh, tackling this, uh, uh, your question about how we can make the, our collaboration better and then what are the best practices. That I would say from my point of view, as a, I, I, I used to call, I call myself as a kind of a newcomer to this IGF event and initiative. So from what I, I've learned, I think so far, uh, the engagement from the NRI leadership is something we have to actually praise because uh, you were there to support when we have initiatives and listen to us and then support in terms of uh, organizing uh, networking and uh, sharing the event among the different stakeholders internationally. But I think what is, I've noticed could be done better, could be how we can find way from the uh, uh, NRI leadership to better support national uh, IGF event, especially youth event, in in the way of I, I think I, I would stress that in some of our communication, if it is possible to uh, give a, a, a issue a letter of recommendation from the NRI or even from, from the UN DSI when there's any NRI event and issue a certain in a way, letter of recommendation to the uh, coordinator of the event. That would be a, a, a great loss. I, 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 I understand that there might be some restriction and some other policy issue involved in that, but this is something I think we, we do can strengthen engagement in terms of uh, uh, reaching out to various stakeholders and mainly government stakeholders when those uh, organize their coordinators, national. Uh, coordinators want to organize the event. And also, I think uh, we should also find a way to harmonize uh, regional, local, and youth IGF events. Sometimes you, you've noticed that we have a calendar collusion. Imagine we organize, we plan to organize youth IGF event in national level, but at the same moment there will be uh, regional uh, IGF or uh, any uh, another NRI event. That will, I think, uh, for the long run, 
since we are, we want participation participation both nationally, but also have uh, all the sub region stakeholders involved in those activities. I think having a clear uh, database of what yeah you've done well in informing uh, the global community on that, but I think strengthening the the different timetables of different NRI initiatives uh, on real time, informing the different coordinators and interested parties of the region would be a great plus in that direction. Also. And I will not uh, finish my talk uh, without strengthening the fact that we need to issue a best practice book for the NRI. And I, I know there's already best practice forum, but I think we really need something from the NRI uh, community as a global, as a handbook of best practice of what has been working so far and on top of which we can build and what is missing and mm -hmm. what we can do better in terms of organizing different activities, including funding, including engaging and empowering different uh, underrepresented uh, communities, uh, uh, stakeholders in this whole process. And in terms of sustainability, sorry to be long, I, I think uh, we need to take measure also to make uh, to make sure that all these initiatives and uh, and are sustainable and also take steps to fast track all the recommendations that have been issued to different national, regional, and youth events so that we know why actually what we are, why we are organizing this uh, uh, NRI initiative, and that the impact are really visible and, and change are being made. And in that regard, I would like to uh, support Mama Mary's point on uh, how we make sure that the government takes over when it comes to organizing, for example, national uh, NRI event or sub regional initiative. And my last point, sorry to be long, will be. A fellowship selection the, to select people, the, especially newcomers. I mean, newcomers for me will be newcomers of people who have never attended an in person event. How we make sure that the process is more uh, open? And if, uh, for example, uh, an applicant is not selected, we to uh, detail. Uh, especially what is the reason why it is not being selected, not ju just general uh, story, not being, uh, you are not being selected because we have many applicants that I mean, that would be very useful. And yeah, that, I will stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yao. I'm getting warnings here that we are very much over time and there's a session after us. So I would like us to wrap up with uh, comments from two more online um, NRI coordinators. Umut, please, you have the floor, then Abraham, and then we will conclude for today, but there will be plenty of opportunities to discuss further. Umut, I hope you can be unmuted. Oh, actually, you are now. Umut, I see that you are unmuted, but we are unable to hear you here, so could be something also on your side. Okay, Anja. Hi. Am I? <laughs> um, continue with mine. Let's let's uh, hear from Abraham uh, until Umut okay. works on his audio. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Anja. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to um, appreciate your effort because sometimes I um, really want to um, understand how you able to combine all this work from NRIs to all the um, IGFM communications and. Um, I um, uh, have been supporting the West African Youth IGF and the uh, West African IGF to us as well, and the Ghana IGF, and also belonging to the Pan-African Youth Ambassadors for Internet Governance. Um, it's been a, a very um, good discussion here, following in terms of partnership and other governments. But um, this is my concern because um, when thinking of um, bringing people in partnership as a um, um, Mama Mary was saying, and other people were talking about, um, we also have to factor the um, equality in terms of participation. 
Um, when we look at this IGF, um, Africa is being underrepresented um, because um, we um, had some challenges in terms of assessing the locations that um, the events have been um, chosen. And uh, we really want to engage private um, companies, stakeholder groups that can also support the IGF um, in terms so that they can understand the formula pol um, policies and formulations. But um, how can you also engage them when they, they can't get access to even witness the practicality of the IGF? I know private companies from different African countries who were trying to um, assess this year's IGF, but they couldn't because of the location, visa restrictions and others. So what I will um, suggest is that we must be able to um, also um, um, think through from the MAG level to the decision makers, how we um, choose the selection of a place for IGF, which will not restrict so many people. And we must also have a model because I know the UN did a very good work with the host government, but things were not clear. So there was, there should be an extensive communication to countries who are willing to host IGF. How will you facilitate to accommodate all the people coming from different regions? Because I know that Anja was even sending a lot of consistent emails to different countries, different people, but they were still refusing. People were funded by the IGF um, secretariat. They refused them visa because of um, some of these things. Um, and I know it's, it's very heartbreaking as well. Involving government too, um, as a decision maker is very key. Sometimes we, we, we can, the IGF secretariat and the um, NRS can also send invitation to government as well so that the government will be able to um, work towards to maybe we have funding for people. We can fund about 20 people to come to this IGF, which will also be another plus for IGF so that they can extend some of the fundings to and other people who uh, will be influential too. So this is my um, takeaways, and I really thank everyone for contributing to this. And uh, we, as a Pan-African Youth Ambassadors for Internet Governance, we tried as much as possible. We have trained over 1,000 people in Internet Governance in different languages, um, Swahili, English, Portuguese, um, Arabic, and French. We, 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 we were trying to create an impact within the various community from different African countries, over 52 African countries. But we wanted to have a few to bring these people on board, but we, we couldn't due to some other processes. So thank you very much. And we appreciate that some of this um, um, consensus contribution will be taken um, into consideration. Thank you very much. This is Selby Abraham. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abraham. Indeed, very valuable. Uh, Umut, if you want to try once again, we have a minute to go. You can try. I think we still can't hear you. I see you are unmuted in Zoom. But it could be that your uh, verbal comment would relate to your written comment. And uh, technically, it's about uh, finding a way to improve the way of sharing our inputs, messages, ways to engage multi-stakeholders, and also our BPFs in order to know exactly what is going on with the NRI. And that is indeed a message that's been sent by several of you. The IGF Secretariat, as you know, will summarize uh, all these valuable, valuable inputs into action points. This will inform our consultations for a bottom-up planning of the work plan for 2024. Uh, we will certainly, after the IGF, as you know, traditionally enter those consultations and hopefully start the next year with a new concrete work plan. And I'm very glad that we are um, on the radar as a network of other processes as well. Um, as Anna mentioned, the CSTD, the VSS Plus 20 roadmap, but also the GDC. And thank you very much for your excellent, valuable work, everything that you're doing. That's a concrete impact and change that we are witnessing. And from the IGF Secretariat, just a big thank you to every single one of you. Thank you. See you at the gala dinner. And thank you everyone online.